are doing a lift kit installation on a 2002 Honda CRV. This should apply all the way through 2006. First thing we're going to do is we're actually going to do the subframe kit first. So we're going to pull off the um, bolts that hold the motor mount to the bracket. And then um, you're also going to want to remove this air box bolt right there. And then there's like a little nut right there. Those come off. Loosen this screw right here and then take it. No need that. Take this uh, clamp loose right here and this whole air box will just come right out. And that'll give you access to the transmission bolts, which are underneath it. And that's what we're gonna have to get to to lower the engine. All right, now that we've got access to. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I didn't know if you were. TikTok, man. I was wondering if you were recording or not. Battery and uh, storage space are. Out you're just going to want to support the engine and transmission just put a little piece of wood or whatever to protect the uh, oil pan from getting dented but just to support the weight of it while you drop it down and then take these bolts out right here the two studs you can just leave because there's enough on there that you can um, just reuse them and just put the spacer in that last bolt will be, will be replaced with a longer one all right, so next you're going to want to take these three bolts out right here. There's one there, one there, and another one back there. That's going to allow you to lift this whole assembly up enough to get a spacer in between. Hey, I heard it hit the ground. <laughs> now, once all those bolts are out, you can just lift this entire assembly up, and then you should be able to drop the spacers in place. Make sure there there is a way to put these on, and if you notice, this stu this stud has a wider base to it, and if you put the smaller spacer on there, it doesn't go down all the way. There's a gap about eighth of an inch, and then you can't get them tight. So the one with the smaller hole is going to go right there, and then we've got two with a slightly larger hole that go all the way down over top of that base. And that's how they're made to fit, just like that. All right, so next you're gonna to wanna to loosen the uh, bolts that actually hold the cradle to the body. There's one right there. We've already loosened that one so it can drop a little bit. And there's another one right back here. And you'll see the frame just start to drop down a little bit. There'll be a little gap. And that's just gonna be enough for us to bolt this all back together with the one inch spacer between it. And then basically this whole thing drops down an inch. So, and don't be alarmed about this barely sticking out. Once you tighten everything up, there's plenty of thread engagement on these. Um, one thing to notice though, or one thing to note is you don't wanna put this kit on with the engine spacers. If you've already done engine spacers, the quarter inch engine spacers, you have to take those out to install this kit. There's not enough thread to do both the one inch and the quarter inch um, engine spacer kit. All right, so there's this one bolt right here that comes with the kit. You're gonna take out the factory one and that's gonna take an M12 by 70 and it comes in this little pack right here. And uh, if you're like me and you just open everything up, dump it out and throw the instructions in the trash, you're gonna to wanna to grab the longer of those two. This is a 60 and that's a 70. The 60 goes over here and the 70 goes on that side. So drop that on in there and then all you gotta do is tighten everything up and that side is pretty much done just put the air box back in and you're set so this side requires two different size spacers and the reason why i'll show you on these here we've got the bolt which uses the 12 millimeter spacer and then the stud which uses a larger and if you can see them side by side here you can see one of them's larger than the other and the reason for that is because of this little shoulder right here at the bottom of the stud. So when you, what happens is if you use the wrong size spacer on that stud, it won't go down all the way. It'll stay right on the top of that little, see it won't go down all the way over it. So that little gap right there creates a little space. There's no, uh, there's no way to spread the load of the engine moving around and it just puts all the shear force right on that and it breaks it off. So that's why you have to use the larger spacer there so that it slides down. Everything clamps together nice and tight and spreads the load so that it doesn't shear off. So that's why there's two different size spacers here. 
So basically all you have to do is remove this nut here, take this bolt out, it's gonna get replaced. Uh, once you take that nut all the way off, you'll be able to drop the motor down and then slide this spacer over top of the stud and then simply bolt this bracket back in place and there'll be a spacer right in between this bracket and this bracket. Dropped a little bit and you see there's a gap right there. Basically, all you have to do is just slide this spacer into that gap and then you're gonna run your bolt back up through and tighten it, tighten it all up. Same thing in the back right here. Just create that little bit of a gap. Put your spacer in right between the bolt and the body and then um, put your new bolt in. All right, so for the back, it's about the same as the front. You got four main bolts to hold the subframe to the body. You got one here and then there's one right there. And then there's this charcoal canister here that you will lower down with that one bolt. There's a spacer that goes in here. And then these two bolts here for the rear trailing arm, those come out and there's a spacer that goes in between those. All right, you have to remove this charcoal canister right here. And to do so, it's basically just a couple of bolts. There's one here. You see, here's this uh, the skid plate on the bottom of this uh, charcoal canister. Just leave that on. There's a bolt right there. And then there's another bolt right in here, those two, and then there's one more on the side right there. But moving that out of the way allows us to get access to this bolt right here. Remove that and this bolt here, and I lower this whole subframe down enough to get a spacer in right here. This is an M12 by 100 bolt, and the spacer just goes right in between the subframe and the body, and you just bolt it right back in like so. Tighten all that up on all four. There's the other bolt right there. And then same thing on the other side, which I'll show you next. All right, passenger side, same thing. We've got two bolts, two spacers. Just put your uh, your new bolt in like that, like that. Tighten it all up, good to go. All right, moving on to the rear trailing arm spacers. You've got two bolts, two spacers, same thing. These are M12 spacers, they're gonna go right there. And I've loosened these bolts and replaced them with the longer ones to keep it in line so it doesn't get tweaked left to right. Basically, you just have to push this down with a pry bar and then remove one of the bolts, slip the spacer in, and put the bolt back in. All right, now that I've pried this down, put the spacer in, just going to take your bolt, slide it on up in there, and go ahead and tighten that up. And once that's tight, it'll hold the other side in place. Same thing, just drop this bolt out, put your spacer in as such, just like so. In between the trailing arm and the body, just like that, put your bolt in. seems it's actually really easy to do all right you've got two more spacers that go above the diff carrier which is this piece here here's your rear differential diff carrier goes into the body here and you've got two aluminum spacers that go in right between the diff carrier and the body right there and then these two bolts just tighten them up that part's real easy all right guys you've got a couple more spacers that go underneath the car and one of them is going to go on this drive shaft safety loop and this particular car has had this relocated this is supposed to go underneath the drive shaft and there's a hole over there where it's supposed to bolt to i don't know who did this but it is not right so the spacer is actually going to go right here you take this bolt out and there's a spacer and a longer bolt that's going to go right there and then you've got the drive shaft carrier bearing which is right here You've got a spacer that goes between here and here and over there, the two longer bolts that come in the kit. That's your, that's what's called a carrier bearing and that lowers the drive shaft. And then you've got another drive shaft safety loop right there. I can't quite reach it because there's stuff in my way, but let me just zoom in. Okay, so yeah, you can see it a little better now. The drive shaft uh, safety loops are just there in case the drive shaft snaps and it doesn't pull vault you. And there's a spacer that goes on 
one side on these um, on this little strap and it just lowers it down just enough so that when you lower the drive shaft it doesn't touch so that's pretty much it underneath the car uh, we're gonna move on to the back all right we're gonna start by removing these upper control arms right here Pull these bolts out right here and then... all right for taking these rear struts out we're gonna start on the inside and we're gonna pull this little plastic piece off right here and then you're gonna want to fold the seat forward. I love the CRVs that have this dual folding rear seat mechanism. Fold that forward and then lift this and then your seat folds up like that. Bro. <laughs> okay. And we're going to pretend that's not there. Keep working. This is uh, your access to your bolts. All right, the little uh, quarter inch impact was too weak to break those loose. So basically got the 50 BMG of impacts to take out a tiny little bolt. So I couldn't get an impact on that, or at least not this big monster one here. So I'm just using a really long ratchet. I'm gonna show you the proper way to install these spacers onto the strut. One thing you have to notice right away is that when these things are fully bolted down, there's only a tiny little bit of space between the tip of this stud and the bottom plate here and there's going to be a bolt there so when you tighten them all the way those two are going to touch so all you have to do is just cut a tiny little bit off the end the factory struts have these little tapers on them and cutting that off isn't going to hurt anything aftermarket struts which i'll show you i have some for an rd1 a lot of times the aftermarket ones will not have that point they're just threaded all the way to the end so on those so this is for you aftermarket guys. You're not gonna use your stock struts. You're using aftermarket, let's say quick struts, right? The ones that come all assembled like this. What you're gonna to wanna to do at that point is put a nut on first. When you cut this off to allow clearance, at that point, backing the nut off will clean the threads or any burrs that come from cutting this off. So you don't have to worry about that with stock ones. It's only on aftermarket. So. We're gonna just hack just a tiny little bit. Maybe I shouldn't use the word hack. We're gonna trim just a tiny little bit off of this. So, as you can see, just cut a tiny little bit off of there. Just enough to allow the bolt head to fit once it's installed. So, uh, I'm just going to do the one side here so we can speed this along. But basically, you see where these go. Basically, you can see where these go. The, um, the nut goes on like normal, and then it sandwiches it in like this so that this fits flush. And then this bolt will just be captive right there. When you put this strut back in, this will help support the bolt. So it acts just like another stud. And then you put a nut on from the top, just like you would uh, if you were installing the original strut. So um, that's pretty much the gist of that. We're going to go ahead and put this in, and then we will move on to the next thing. All right, from here, it's just a matter of reinstalling the strut. So I'm just going to jam this guy back in. And there is a left and a right on these. So you gotta know, make sure you're uh, putting the right one in. Again, you wanna drop both sides so that you have room for this, uh, for the strut to actually go in. Fuck, no, that's not right. That's somewhat easier said than done, but basically, you just want to get the, the bolts lined up. All right, we're lined up here, lined up here, looks like. Yeah, okay. All right, once you've got the strut in this position here, you're going to want to put the bottom bolt back in to the strut, which is a little bit easier said than done. You just want to kind of use your pry bar to maneuver it around into position. Ooh, I'm going to hurt myself before this is over. I used to have a much bigger pry bar, and I don't know how in the world you could lose something that big, 
but I managed to lose my big pry bar. So now all I have is this little piddly one. And I think this would be easier with a bigger bar, but I don't have it. So this might be a more accurate representation of tools that you have to work with. If you're not a professional, and I'm definitely not a professional, but the average backyard mechanic that maybe doesn't have a whole set of snap-on tools to work with, and sometimes you just got to work with what you got, and that's what I'm doing here. Case in point, I just looked all over the shop a minute ago for one lousy 14 millimeter socket, and I could not find a single one. So I think they're all at the house. And that's just the way it goes sometimes with these. It's like you just struggle finding tools, or if you're like me, you spend more time searching for your tools than you do actually using them. But you can kind of see there. Let's push this into place and then get the bolt in and then you can um, you know tighten that up. So just to kind of keep this video moving though, I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna keep going. Now look, as you can see, this brake line is a little bit taut. We're not fully bolted together yet. You know, once this is bolted together, it's not gonna be that tight. But regardless of that, we do have a solution for the brake line in the kit. And that is these little two dads right here. This is just a little one inch bracket that brings it up just enough that it makes a difference in the tension of the uh, brake line. So you'll see it still looks a little bit tight, even with the brake line bracket in place. But you'll see once this is all in place, this has more slack because we're still not bolted here. So let's do that next just so you guys can see. At this point, if you're gonna install the adjustable rear upper control arm, you would do that right now. Just to keep the video moving, like I said, I'm gonna leave this one in place. But basically there's a bolt here, bolt here, new one goes in, get it adjusted by your uh, alignment mechanic. Straight, straightforward, two bolts. Yeah, I, you know, that should be pretty straightforward. So let's do the alignment of this real quick. All right, so what you wanna do here is, what you wanna do here is just basically jack up the back to align that piece. Very easily, just get your jack underneath and just lift it up. And then you can easily, or more easily, I don't know which bolt came out of there, that one? Yeah, it looks like that one. Uh, put that back into place. Ah, ran out of memory, so missed that last little bit. But basically, I'll just reenact it for you. I pushed this in and pushed the bolt in with my fingers like that, and that got it in. Now, I'm gonna lower the jack and you're gonna see that this has uh, plenty of slack. See, now that it's all together, we've got plenty of slack on this brake line. So it's important to notice that. Uh, but yeah, like I said, you wanna just put your adjustable in at this step. But after this, that's pretty much all there is to it. Obviously, we're gonna tighten all the bolts. You wanna to torque those to spec. If you, were in so, if you were so inclined to do so, you could find the factory torque specs online somewhere probably. Um, but there is one other thing I wanna to mention to you guys to tighten everything up in the suspension's resting state, in other words, with the weight on the vehicle. So we're gonna put the wheel back on, loosen all of these bushings up, or loosen all these bolts up that hold the bushings, and then retighten it all. That's pretty much it. All right, now moving on to the front installation, I wanna show you guys something real quick we just started doing, and that is we added this QR code right on the top of the packaging for all of our spacers. And basically, you can scan this and it will take you right to the installation video. Now, the old video that this is linked to is for an installation on an element and everything on an element still applies here. So I'm probably not going to change that video because it's, you know, it's good enough. It's pretty well done. So, but I just wanted to show you guys real quick mounting these to the top of the strut. So it comes with hardware here. You're gonna reuse the factory nuts to mount it to the strut. As you can see, it's not completely uh, symmetrical and it will only go on one way. You can't put it on wrong. So it's made to fit on just like that. And then you use your factory hardware. 
just reuse the factory hardware to install this to the strut, just like so. And you will use these bolts to come in from the top of the shock tower and on into the spacer. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the clip of the old video, which is the installation on the front of an element. Uh, first thing you wanna do is pop this little nut loose right here. Take that little cotter pin out, save it for later. You're gonna reuse that, take that nut out. And then you're gonna to wanna to shock this with a sledgehammer. I can't do it and hold the camera at the same time. Basically, you wanna tap this right here with a sledgehammer and it'll knock this out without damaging anything. It's better than using like a pickle fork because it'll tear up that rubber boot and you don't want to have to do, you don't have to replace that if you don't want to. We're going to take that off, that off, and then we're going to go up to the top. Loosen this little brake line off right here. Carefully. Now you're going to remove the, uh, the ABS wire. Just take a pair of pliers and just pinch the little thing and it just comes right out. No big deal there. Same thing in the back. So you got this disconnected now. Now this can come now, out. Now these bolts here have to come out for the strut. You want to take it's a 19 millimeter there and a 22 millimeter on the other side. You want to hold that with your wrench and then just comes right out. Now I did spray these with WD-40 and I recommend always doing that before you start on a job like this. And we're only going to reuse one of these because we're putting the adjustable camber bolts in. So we'll save one of those and we'll toss the other one. Now we're going to take the three bolts out at the top of the strut. Let's get up here and do that. I've already taken two of them out, but now you can take this. It's easier on the other side because I'm right-handed. All right, one thing to remember is if this is loose, this hub can actually flop down and the axle will pull out of the joint in the inside and it's a real bear to get it put back in if it falls out. So what I've done is grabbed a couple of zip ties and I just looped them through this top bolt hole here, around that and then around the uh, bracket on the body here. So what that does is it keeps it from coming out saves your axle, save you a headache. Okay, so now we're gonna install the spacer on the top of the strut here. And it can only go on one way, so don't worry about messing it up. There's no way to mess it up. So you basically just wanna position it like that. Put these on. So there you go, there's the strut spacer installed. And you just wanna tighten up all these nuts before you put it back in. Now this is 180 degrees turn, so whenever you install this spacer, you'll have to swivel this. That's it. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna trim this pinch weld down just a little bit. That'll give a little bit extra clearance for this tie rod. When it's lifted, this is actually moved downward some, and it'll actually contact that in some circumstances. So we're going to just take the death wheel and we're going to cut a little notch there for that to have a little bit more clearance. Just hit it with a wire wheel, clean up some of the rough edges, and then we're going to shoot a little bit of spray paint on that so that it doesn't rust, and that'll be it. If you're doing one side at a time, take the sway bars off. I actually did the other side a couple days ago and I'm just now getting to this side. So normally I would just drop both struts down and then you don't even have to take this sway bar loose. Just let both sides suspension down at the same time and then it'll, it'll, it'll flex down where you can get the strut in with the spacer. All right, so when you're putting the top back together, you just want to get all the bolts lined up. You can take your hand and you just kind of twist this around and move it around as much as you need to get these bolts to line up and then you just thread them in tighten them up it's pretty easy to do so that's basically the install now if you're doing the offset camber bolts which we are doing in this one you want to put the camber bolt in the top hole like this and then the bottom one you put the stock bolt back in and then just reconnect your brake lines and your ABS lines and just check all your bolts that's pretty much it
Okay, so this is the camber correction kit for these vehicles. This is basically just a bolt with a little bump on there. And that offset is what makes this move in and out to get you your camber adjustment. So it goes basically, it goes in exactly like the, the factory bolt. Just slip it right in like that. And then, you know, obviously you're going to want to adjust it whenever you go to get it aligned. But basically you do that by turning the head and then you tighten it back down wherever the position is that you need it to be. So I'm going to tighten all this back up and we're going to drop it on the ground and see what we've got. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. The three inch lift kit installation on a 2002-2006 CRV slash Element. And as you can see, we didn't quite completely install this kit for this video. And the reason why is I'm actually installing three different lift kits on this vehicle and videoing them. And I'm just kind of going through them while it's all apart. But in the next video, we will be doing a complete walk around after, because we are leaving the three inch lift kit on this car. Um, the other kits are just for the videos, but basically the next video will show you like a walk around. We're going to do some driving tests and I'm also going to show you guys a really quick alignment hack that should uh, save you guys from, you know, wearing out your tires until you can get it professionally aligned. So keep an eye on HRG TV for that. And I do appreciate you guys as always watching to the end and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Under the charcoal canister on this side, isn't it? Okay, so to start this clip over again. Why does it always happen when I'm filming? <clears throat> all right, fuck. I haven't burped all fucking morning. So I will do that. That actually makes it a little more, um, stir fuck. It doesn't stop. <sighs> Jesus. So basically, as you can see, we just lifted the, oh my God, dude. And that's it, I guess. <laughs>